at their corners now. It's uh, Jay Lavender, uh, six foot 185, and he, he is a senior. The other linebacker, by the way, is Ryan King. Five. For the Oswego uh, Panthers and the United Township High School Panthers, we're going to announce the offense. For the Oswego uh, Panthers first, number 74. Senior tackle, Ben Wook. He's in Indianapolis, right? Number 76, guard, Greg Overstreet. At center, number 70, Adam Deans. At guard, number 50, Zach Kesselbaum. At tackle, number 75, Randy Stone. At receiver, number 80, Bobby Miller. At receiver, number 81, Corey Cavender. At quarterback, number 24, Greg Orser. At back, number 34, Jay Graziano. At back, number 22, Ryan King. At number 23 at back, number Steve Dollinger. United Township High School Panthers. At corner, number two, Colin Gable. At corner, number three, Justin Sullivan. At safety, number 34, Brian Lejong. At linebacker, number 45, Justin Smolenski. At tackle, number 55, Brian Dennison. At tackle, number 56, Brandon Cornell. And in, number 60, Adam Solis. And in, number 61, Jeff Freeman. At linebacker, number 63, John Johnson. At tackle, number 73, Dustin Abney. And at linebacker, number 84, Brian Seals. Of course, Mike Tracy. Thinking Ottawa might be receiving. As we go. I'm sorry. As Ottawa is nearby. <laughs> Ottawa's nearby. They're playing at Rock Island tonight. And again, the winner of tonight's game takes on the winner of McHenry and Champagne Centennial. They play tomorrow night. UT looks to appear to be throwing, at, or rather, they'll be kicking as uh, the ball is uh, spotted at their own 40 yard line. I, I knew I was going to do that, too. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of you may recall Oswego, they did win the 1992 Class 4A state title, uh, defeating a, a, a nearby opponent in Geneseo 14-6 uh, that night. And a couple of years ago, some of you may recall, Oswego had a home-and-home -home series against Geneseo, defeating them both years that they played. I believe that was back in 1996 and 97. As uh, right now, the United Township Panthers get ready to kick this game off. Scott Durbin, 5'8", 200, handing, handling the uh, kicking duties. And uh, there he kicks it off. And it is uh, picked up, a squib kick at the 37-yard line to the 40. And uh, across the 45, 50 yard line, and on that return for Oswego was uh, Ryan King. Yep, not the way you want to start out the football game for United Township. They uh, went with the squib kick, but the kick never really got off the ground. The kick only traveled about 20 yards to the opponent's 40 yard line before uh, the uh, receiver picked it up and had a nice little gain of 10 yards. And they're going to have the ball right at the 50-yard line. Great field position to start the night for Oswego. Mike? First and 10 for the Oswego Panthers at midfield. Twin receivers near side, I formation. And uh, there's the give to the second man through. That's Graziano into Panther territory. Across the 45, 40, 35, 30. And he's finally tackled at the 25-yard line. And possibly making a touchdown saving tackle was Colin Gable. But not until uh, Graziano picks up 25 yards in a first down. Good looking play by Ottawa. Uh, just a straight dive up the middle. But he had an incredible hole uh, to work with. Uh, 25-yard gain on the play. Nice-looking play from, uh, from uh, Oswego. 25-yard line of UT on first and 10. 
Handoff. That again to Graziano between the tackles across the 20 inside the 15 yard uh -oh. line. And Mike and Tracy the, uh, is. Uh, 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 Oswego yeah. has a first down and making the tackle for the United Township, Ryan Lejeune. 11 22 to play in the first quarter. Mike Tracy calls his first timeout. He is uh, on the walking out to the huddle as uh, he is not the happiest person in the world right now. Um, okay, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, take our, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll keep it right here as uh, we'll see what happens on this uh, scoring drive. Exactly right, Mike, as we go uh, knocking at United Township's doorstep right now. We'll go over some of our uh, fine sponsors. As we go. They've not had a second or third down play as of yet tonight. Handoff again to Graziano between the tackles, and he is inside the five, very close to the goal line. Tackled at the two, making the tackle on the play for the UT Panthers was Josh Shadman, but another first down for the uh, Oswego Panthers, and right now they are averaging uh, about 16 yards per play. And if Oswego is going to be doing this all night long, then uh, it's going to be a very long night for United Township. First and goal from the two for the Oswego Panthers at the UT Panther two-yard line. The quarterback, Esther, hands off to Graziano between the tackles into the end zone. Touchdown. And the Oswego Panthers have struck first just a minute 13 into the football game. Four plays. A four-play drive for Oswego, all on the ground, 50 yards, uh, beautiful football, uh, simple football, right up the middle, uh, blocking at the point of attack, blocking at the line of scrimmage, pushing United Township's uh, defensive front back, and uh, they looked really sharp doing it. Handling the kickoffs, the, the uh, extra point is Bobby Miller. And there's the snap, the placement by the quarterback, and the kick is up, and it is good. Man. And with 10:47 uh, left to go in the first quarter of play, the Oswego Panthers have struck first. It's Oswego seven, United Township nothing. And from the Soul Bowl in East Moline, this is Panther football. He by the score of seven to nothing as Oswego scores on a four-play, 50-yard drive, a uh, two-yard touchdown run by uh, Jake Graziano. He had all four carries for 50 yards, and uh, Oswego scored in a minute 13. And uh, Bobby Miller added the extra point out of their hold of the uh, quarterback, Greg Esser. And now uh, Bobby Miller does handle the uh, kickoff duties here. Yeah, Miller has a, a fine leg. He uh, definitely is a, a Division I prospect. Uh, he's a big, big tall kid, 6'2", 6'3". He's uh, going to squib this one. I wonder if he just kicked that a little wrong. But that'll uh, bounce to about the 20-yard line where... Oh, number 88 of the Panthers, Scott Lambrecht, returns the ball for a nice five or six yard gain before number 23 of Oswego makes the tackle on the play. The, Pan the United Township Panthers will start first and 10 from their own 22 yard line. The ball will be spotted on the near hash mark as we'll get a f our first glimpse of United Township's offense as they break huddle, split backfield, Wingman to the near side of the field. That's Justin Shatterman. Bar carrier, though, on the play. Goes off right tackle. Looks to be Brian Lejeune. And Lejeune gets a gain of about two yards on the play with 10.30 to play in the first quarter. United Township down 7 to nothing against Oswego. Oswego had absolutely positively no problem rushing the football in five plays, 50 yards. They went right between the tackles on all four of those plays. This time Shatterman splits to the near side of the field. Lejeune and Smolinski in the backfield. There's a reverse to Shatterman. He's got some running room as he picks up a block. He's across the 30 and the 35. Nice looking play by United Township. It's Halloween pulling the first trick out of the bag. That was a just on that uh, carry as he went off uh. left tackle and uh, picks up the Panthers uh, of UT a first down. First and 10, United Township from their own 38-yard line as Paul Cercioni breaks him out of the huddle. 
Shatterman uh, once again split to the near side of the field. Lejeune and Smolinski in the backfield. The handoff goes to Smolinski on the dive play up the middle over right guard. And Smolinski picks up a gain, nice gain of about three yards on the first down. It'll be second down and seven with nine minutes and 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. Your score, Oswego 7, United Township 0. This is United Township's first possession of the football game. And even though those plays by uh, UT right now don't look like what Oswego ran in their first possession, you still uh, three yards is uh, better than uh, is what you want. Same formation, this time Josh Shatterman split to the near side as the ball carrier once again looks to be Smolinski. And actually, nope, that's actually that is going to be carrier. Scott Durbin who picks up a gain of two or three yards on the play. East Mul United Township will be facing a third down and six situation into the game, D'Amico Vallejo. As we'll see just exactly what Mike Tracy has called. Josh Shatterman split to the near side of the field. Ball spotted at the United Township 41 yard line. Option, Circioni pitches the ball. It's a bad pitch behind Brian Lejone. But Lejone Falls on the ball as United Township loses six, seven yards on the play. And it'll be fourth down and 12 for the Panthers. And in the punt, it looks like will be number 41, Scott Durbin, back deep for Oswego. A back to receive for the Oswego Panthers is uh, Corey Cavender, 5'10", 165. There's the snap, the kick, it's a pretty decent one. As the receiver catches at the 30-yard line, and he can't break free. It looks like it might have been Josh Shatterman making the tackle. A nice special teams play by Josh Shatterman. And the return by Cavender for minimal yardage as now Oswego will start this possession with 8.06 left to go, up 7-0 at their own 32-yard line. Very important for United Township's defense to make a stand right here, right now with three and out. Would uh, do something for the confidence of the Panthers. Twin, twin receivers near side, high formation, and the uh, quarterback Esser hands off, and that is to the uh, fullback. And on that carry for the uh, Oswego Panthers is Ryan King on his first carry of the night, and he gets very close to the 40-yard line, another pickup of eight for the Panthers. Well, we know Oswego has a decent passing attack, but if they keep running the ball like this, we're, uh, we're not going to see it. We're not going to see it. <laughs> Five carries, 58 yards as a team here tonight for Oswego in the first four and a half minutes of the game. Receiver split to the near side is Bobby Miller. Receiver split to the far side. There's the handoff. Oh, the great play. To go to between the tackles, and they may have went to the well once too often as uh, making the tackle for the United Township Panthers on that play that was appears to be uh, 61. Jeff Freeman. Yeah, as uh, Freeman does a nice job coming up and stepping into a gap and making a play. It's now going to be third down and three mm -hmm. as Graziano lost a yard on that play. Twin receivers split to the near side. Bobby Miller and Corey Cavender. There's a handoff again to Graziano oh. between the tackles across the 40-yard line, fighting for the first down, very close to the 42. Making the tackle on the play for the United Township Panthers was Adam Carton. Missed a uh, chance in the backfield. Uh, they could have had the ball carrier tackled for a loss, but uh, he squirted away and went right up the middle for a, a nice small gain that was good enough for a uh, Oswego first down. First and 10 for the Panthers at their own 43 yard line, the Oswego Panthers. <laughs> As we have six and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter, Oswego leading seven to nothing. Receiver split right and left. Cavender to the far side, Miller to the near side, handoff to the first man through. That is the fullback, Ryan King. King very close to midfield as he picks up about seven yards on the play. United Township so far is losing the battle at the line of scrimmage. And uh, we know that was a big concern of Mike Tracy's was the fact that Oswego's line is a heck of a lot bigger than his own line at United Township. I believe both tackles are stretch over 275 pounds. 275, 6'3", 6'5", in height. 
And right now, Oswego averaging eight and a half yards per play. Twin receivers near side of Cavender and Miller. Eye formation. Hand off to the second man through. That is going to be uh, Graziano. Graziano off right tackle across the 45, 40 yard line, out of bounds. And uh, getting him out of bounds for the UT defense was John Johnson, but not until the Panther, Oswego Panthers pick up a first down. This game could be over here real soon if the UT defense does not stand up. <coughs> First and 10 for us, we go from the Panther 41. Gain of nine on that play. And a first down for Graziano. Graziano, 62 yards on seven carries here in the first quarter. Receivers right and left. There's a handoff. Looked like a busted play, but handoff to King. King goes cross buck action as he goes off left guard and is tackled at the 36-yard line. Picks up five. Second down and five coming up. Wow. These uh, Oswego is not only big, but they're extremely quick. They get off the ball very well. Uh, each of those linemen... Uh, Looks like they do a good job of uh, anticipating the uh, quarterback's cadence, and they do a, a fine job of getting off the ball and getting to where they need to be quick. Seven of uh, Oswego's ten plays run here so far in the first quarter went for five yards or more. From the 36-yard uh, line on second down and five, hand off to Graziano as he goes off right tackle, and he stood up and uh, driven down, making the tackle as Brian Seals, as uh, Graziano is able to pick up just a yard on that play. Now it's going to set up third down and about four. This is uh, so far the biggest play of the ball game for United Township, and here we are um, at approaching the four-minute mark of the uh, first quarter, but uh, really a, a stand here. Uh, would do would do uh, United Township some wonders. Maybe we might see a pass here from Oswego. Bobby Miller and Corey Cavender split to the near side eye formation, and there's the quarterback Esser as we have our first flag of the game. If this is against Oswego, this will uh, help uh, UT's defense some, as it would set up third and nine, and it's a dead ball. Ball start against Oswego, so it will be third and nine, and you may see uh, quarterback uh, Greg Esser put the football up for the first time tonight. Uh, 4.06 to go in the uh, first quarter. Oswego up 7-0 as they scored on their very first possession of the game on a uh, two-yard touchdown run by Jake Graziano. In fact, Graziano had all four carries there in that uh, first drive. Twin receivers split to the far side. Miller and Cavender split backs. Graziano and King. Esser back to pass. Looks far side. There's the throw. The pass is incomplete no. and is intended for Bobby Miller. And now uh, Oswego has fourth down coming up. And now interesting situation to see what they're going to do here. Uh, Looks like they're bringing in the punting unit. Yep, it would be an awful long field goal attempt from here, about uh, 57, 58 yards. I didn't know. I didn't. I wasn't so much worried about maybe a, a field goal attempt, but maybe just to go for it and uh, putting some confidence in your uh, having confidence in your defense. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Miller's the, uh, Panthers are going to punt. Oswego's Panthers are, and there's the punt by Miller. And to receive is uh, oh. they're going to let it roll, and it rolls inside the 10 down to the six yard line, and that's where United Township will take over. 3.30 left to go in the first quarter. It's uh, Oswego 7, United Township nothing, and uh, we'll keep it right here, Pete. All right, Mike, uh, getting ready for United Township's second offensive possession of the evening there, trailing Oswego 7 to nothing. 3.30 to play in the first quarter. We are coming to you live from the Soul Bowl in East Moline. Class 5A, first round playoff action on AM 1230 WLLR as the Panthers in a split formation in the backfield as the hand, oh, Circioni's gonna throw it deep on the play to, and just off the fingertips of Justin Shadaman. Shadaman couldn't quite hang on to the football. Penalty flags are down on the play. And this one might be called against Shadaman. He might have left the line a little bit too early. Certainly had beaten the defensive back, had his hands on the football. And now that looks like an area though where he was downfield about five, 10 yards. He may have been held himself. As the referee comes forward toward the sideline to make, just, no, he turns around and heads back the other way. Not sure of the call just yet, but definitely Shadaman uh, had two or three steps on Oswego's defensive back, and if he would have caught the ball, he would have been gone. Yeah, and they're going to step it back against uh, United Township, and we're still waiting for an official call from the referee. There it is, Pete. An eligible man downfield. 
and they decline the penalty. How can you have an illegal man downfield? It seemed like that was a pop pass pattern by United Township. Huh. Well, they any right, second down for the for uh, United Townships. I'm so weary of saying uh, the Panthers since we have both teams uh, that are the Panthers here tonight. They'll go with a spread formation, two receivers to the near side of the field, a wingman and a fullback. Smolinski's a fullback. Cercioni in the end zone to pass it out. His pass is completed on the play to number 37, Aaron Schofield. As Schofield is dragged down, he fumbles at the end of the play, but I think the referees will call it dead as forward progress will mark Schofield's catch at about the 15-yard line, and that is very close to a first down for United Township. However, it comes up just about a yard short. It's going to be third down and one big play coming for United Township. I Desperately look, needing a first down to keep the ball in their own hands. I look for uh, Dustin Spolinski on a uh, fullback dive play here to get that first down. Ryan Rangel split to the far side of the field along with it might be Lejoan out there. As Smolinski does get the ball and he is met at the line of scrimmage. And we'll see, this one's gonna depend on where the referees mark the football. And where they're giving poor progress. And I don't think he got it. Uh, they might they'll probably measure this one and I think that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, I, I, to me, I think uh, way, I, they had to get closer to the 17 yard line than what they do to the 15 yard line. And from my angle, that ball's uh, more closer to the 15 yard line than it is the uh, 17. UT spreaded things out on that last play and gave it to Smolinski up the middle. And the offensive line couldn't quite, couldn't quite get the push Mike Tracy was looking for as the chain gang is out on the field and he's gonna be sh short of the first down yeah. by about you five or six inches and- You got a punt, you can't- Disgusted Mike Tracy will send the punting team on and uh, rough going so far for United Township's offense. Well, you, got, you can't, way, the way uh, Oswego's offense has moved the football, you've got to, uh, you've got to punt here. You can't take Derek go for it inside your own 20-yard line. Cavender back to receive for Oswego. Scott Durbin into punt for United Township. Fourth and inches from their own 15-yard line. Forced to punt with two minutes and 37 seconds to play in the quarter. There's the punt. It's a high wobbler. As the receiver calling for fair catch at about the 48-yard line. And that's where he'll catch it. And that's where the referees will blow it dead. And that's what Mike Tracy talked about before the game, uh, Pete Ivanik. He says, Oswego likes to play on a shortened field. Well, here you go. Yeah. Second of uh, three possessions. And they're starting either at uh, midfield or in United Township territory as we have 2.30 left to go. Along with Pete Ivanik, I'm Mike Coquit, AM 1230 WLR, bringing you live coverage of the uh, Class 5A first round playoffs between the United Township Panthers and the Oswego Panthers. First and 10 for Oswego at the uh, UT 48 yard line. Receiver split right and left. Offset eye formation. Handoff, second man through is uh, King. King tries to go cross buck action off of left guard. Finds the yard, it's hard to come by and making the tackle on the play for the uh, Panthers was Johnson. But uh, uh, gained about a, about a yard there for uh, the yep. back four. United, United Township does a nice job sniffing out the play. It was a uh, counter trap play going up the middle, pulling the backside guard, and handing the ball off to the wingman. Nice job by United Township's defensive front. They need to keep it up, though. Receivers right and left on second and nine from the Panther 47-yard line. I formation. Esser looks at the pass. Green is caught by the uh, by Miller across the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown. He's going to go all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Some broken tackles on the play and uh, some missed tackles as well. No flags. And the Oswego Panthers go up 13 to nothing on a 47-yard touchdown pass. Yep, but the thing about it, the pass was only about five or six yards off of the line of scrimmage. Uh, United Township's defensive back was playing about a dozen yards off of the line of scrimmage, and that gave Miller plenty of time to put a juke move and uh, spin around and break a couple of tackles on his, on his way into the end zone. Bobby Miller. Another good looking play from Oswego. 
Bobby Miller scored the touchdown. Now he's on to attempt the extra point. There's the snap to Esser. There's the kick up by uh, Miller, and it is good. And with a minute 45 left to go here in the first quarter, the Oswego Panthers have gone up two touchdowns, 14 to nothing, following a two-play 48-yard drive. And the two plays, uh, the, the two scoring drives that uh, Oswego's had here tonight so far, uh, Pete Ivanic, have accumulated six plays and about 98 yards. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, certainly have uh, come ready to play football. Uh, they've, they've played a good-looking schedule. They've played against teams that are probably equal to their size. And uh, when they come and play against a team that has the size of United Township that doesn't quite match up, it makes a big difference. A two-play, 48-yard drive for Oswego, a 47-yard touchdown pass from the quarterback Greg Esser to uh, Bobby Miller and took just 45 seconds off the clock for that drive. And now UT has finds themselves in a hole, 14 to nothing. And now, uh, Pete, it looks like uh, Bobby Miller is coming out and he's going to uh, kick this uh, football game off. And it helped Bobby that uh, he's 6'3", 215, and he was able to get his, use his size advantage uh, well, once he pa caught that pass. Yeah, no problem. Uh, United Township's defense backs are pretty much straight uh, 5'10", and, uh, and less in height, and that's just uh, a reach advantage that is gonna have all night long. As uh, Miller is set to kick it off, this is, uh, he'll kick this one again, a, a liner, a squibber, which, uh, as uh, Josh Shatterman picks up the ball and he is busting through the middle, trying to stay on his feet across the 40 yard line as he finally is tripped up. Good looking return by Shatterman. They definitely had a nice look at a wall set up, had plenty of running room. And I think if he could have stayed on his feet, Mike Colquitt, he would have been off to the races for sure. And United Township is right back in this football game. And Josh Shatterman has uh, broken open uh, some touchdown, or rather kickoff and punt returns this season for touchdowns. And now UT's offense has to respond. It has its best field position of the night. 42-yard line of United Township. That's where the Panthers will start. First and 10. This time the handoff goes to Smolinski up the middle. He fights off a couple of tacklers and lunges his way across the 45-yard line. That's where the ball will be spotted. It'll be second down in about seven for United Township. I said UT's not picking up the yardage in huge chunks like Oswego is, but anytime you can get three yards per play, it's the right thing to be doing. Brian LeJone split to the far side of the field. Smolinski and Justin Shatterman in the backfield. And Circione will keep it on the option play. He'll pick up a, oh, he fumbles on the play at the end, trying to put the ball away. Oswego comes up with a recovery, and it'll be Oswego football in United Township territory. Spot the ball right at about the 49-yard line. Circione was running the option. He had a gained two or three yards on the play. He was being wrapped up by an Oswego defender, and as he was falling, he was definitely trying to put the ball, tuck it away, and it looks like he just lost the grip of the football, and Oswego recovers and for once, the, once again in United yeah, Township that's what territory. I was about to say, for the third time in four possessions, Oswego is starting in Panther territory. Twin receivers far side, one to the near side, eye formation. There's the handoff. That's to the fullback King as he goes between the tackles. Gets close to the 45-yard line, making the tackle on the play for the United Township uh, Panther defense was uh, Smolenski, but uh, King picks up four yards on the play to the 45-yard line. And it looks like United Township just uh, just can't seem to get things going today. And, uh, sometimes that happens, and uh, you just have to learn to uh, get with it. There's still an awful lot of football left to be played as we're approaching the end of the first quarter. As we have second down and six from the 45-yard line. Handoff to Graziano. Flag on the play. Cross up 40, 35. Another flags. flag. 30, 25, 20. He is 15, 10, 5. Into the end zone. Touchdown. But we'll have to unsort the uh, flags. And you can tell by the uh, reaction of their uh, split in uh, Bobby Miller. It's going to be against Oswego. Wow. At least uh, one of them is. Yeah. 17.3 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Oswego leading United Township 14 to nothing. Along with Pete Ivanic, I'm Mike Cook with this is WLLR Moline Quad Cities. As again, we're approaching the end of the first quarter as the referees unsort this penalty. And uh, Oswego has scored on uh, two drives, which started either at midfield or United Township territory. And that's where uh, we have uh, the Oswego Panthers now. And, but now they're going to go back into their own territory is we have a uh, personal foul penalty against the uh, 
Oswego Panthers, and that's going to move that football back to the 45-yard line of Oswego. That's a 10-yard penalty. Spot of the foul penalty. So we give uh, Graziano a gain of five on that play, but then a 15-yard penalty. Our first penalty of the football game. And now from the 45-yard line, it is second down and 16. There's a handoff to Graziano again between the tackles, going nowhere. He's going to lose yardage. And uh, making the tackle on the play for United Township Panthers, sneaking in there, knifing through, was uh, Ben Schlitter. And now the ball's marked at the 43-yard line. Nice play by uh, Schlitter. He uh, read what was going on and uh, did a good job of getting in the backfield and uh, creating some havoc as the first quarter comes to a close. Not a good one for United Township, but the good thing is they still have three more quarters to make it up. Okay, one quarter complete. It's Oswego 14, United Township nothing. And from the Sobol and East Moline, this is Panther football. And from the Sobel and East Bowling along in Pete Ivanik, I'm Mike Cokin as we're set to start the uh, second quarter of play. Oswego uh, leading the uh, United Township Panthers 14 to nothing as now Oswego has it third down and 17 from their own 43-yard line. Twin receivers far side, one to the near side, eye formation. And the quarterback, Greg Esther, looks to throw, looking far side. And he's going to take it himself across the 45-50. And he stumbles down into UT territory at the 49-yard line, back to about the original line of scrimmage. Nice job by United Township. They were blitzing on the play. And uh, as we did a good job of picking it up, but the uh, quarterback just couldn't find any open receivers downfield as uh, the Shadman brothers go back deep to uh, return the punt from uh, Bobby Miller. And the snap, the punt's a high wobbler, very high in the air as, oh, Shadman fumbles the... Uh, he fumbles the catch, and Oswego recovers at the United Township 12-yard line. That was a very high punt. I believe uh, Josh Shadaman uh, went to make the catch, and the ball came right out of his gut and onto the ground, where Oswego was there waiting for the fumble recovery. That's two turnovers on the night for United Township, basically in consecutive plays. And now for the uh, fifth possession of the night, or for the fourth out of five possessions on the night, Oswego is in UT territory to start a drive. I formation, twin receivers far side, and Oswego's gonna call a timeout. Yeah, uh, both teams really weren't set on the play. I'm not sure if Oswego's personnel knew uh, the entirety of the play. And the United Township had some problems uh, recognizing the formation and uh, getting in their own defensive alignment to combat it. As we look at uh, some uh, first uh, quarter stats, Oswego has uh, had 99 yards on the ground, 47 through the air for a total of 146 yards. Beautiful. They were penalized once for 15 yards, and for United Township, they had a total of 21 yards on the ground, nine through the air for a total of 30, and mm. were not penalized. United Township had just one first down there in that first quarter, and Oswego had seven. Yeah, uh, United Township definitely has to get things together. They need to realize that uh, there's still a lot of football left to be played. They need to make a big stop here. Down 21 to nothing at the start of the second quarter uh, definitely is not where you want to be uh, in a state playoff game. Uh, when and looking at time of possession, Oswego had the football for two-thirds of the first quarter. 11-18 left to go in the uh, first half. Oswego up 14-0. They are driving on first and 10 from the uh, Panther 13-yard line. Between the tackles goes Graziano, breaking tackles, fighting for the goal line. And he's very close, probably about a yard or two shy. But not until he picks up the Oswego Panthers. Should be a first down for Oswego. Wow, United and Township, goal. Uh, United Township would, would be in this football game. If, uh, if they could just tackle somebody at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Graziani is 
He's uh, breaking at least two tackles every time he gets the football, and he, his his average uh, runs just must be uh, it must be a very big number. It's seven yards per carry. Uh. Seventy-seven yards on eleven carries on first and goal now from the two. And there's a handoff to King as he goes off right tackle into the end zone touchdown, and Oswego goes up twenty to nothing with 10:43 left to go here in the. Uh, First half of play. Just a, a well, finely tuned, well oiled machine this Oswego offense has displayed in the game's first, first uh, 13 minutes, uh, 15 minutes of action uh, tonight here at the Soul Bowl. Uh, just totally unstoppable. And right now, Bobby Miller is going to attempt the extra point off the hold of Greg Esser. And there's the snap, the placement, the kick is up, and it is between the uprights, and it is good. And again, 10.43 left to go here in the first half of play. It's United Township 21, rather uh, Oswego 21, United Township nothing. And we'll be back with more of the second quarter of play. And from the Sobel and East Moline, this is Panther. Ball on AM 1230, WLLR, United Township. Certainly gotten off to the wrong foot so far with 10.43 to play. Until halftime, UT is trailing Oswego 21 to nothing as the Oswego Panther offense absolutely has had no problem running all over the United Township Panther defense. As Bobby Miller is set to tee it off, this time he will kick it a little bit deeper on the line drive as the ball will land in the end zone. Not quite a deep kick high in the air, but just kind of a line drive about 10 feet above uh, Josh and Justin Shatterman's heads. As United Township will take over first and ten from the from their own 20 yard line, as the last two times UT has touched the ball, they have fumbled. First was Paul Circioni on a third down option play. Second was a punt return by Josh Shatterman. As Circioni breaks the Panthers out of the huddle, first and ten. As we have a pro formation, and now the tight end goes in motion. And lines up as a split end to the near side of the field. The pitch will go on the play to Justin Shatterman as he cut it up the middle and will have a nice gain across the 30-yard line, picking up a first down and is brought down at the 32-yard line by Bobby Miller. Also in on the play, Eric Sharp for Oswego. First and 10 for the United Township Panthers, exactly what they needed. On first down, if you can't run up the middle, why not try the outside? And Justin Shatterman, a bright spot for United Township. Uh, two carries, 27 yards. In fact, he's picked up both United Township first downs here in the first half. Shatterman split to the near side of the field as the give goes to Brian Lejeune. Lejeune across the 35-yard line, and he makes his way up to the 37-yard line before he is brought down on the play by Oswego's big defensive tackle, number 71, Tim Sheffelt. As Lejeune picks up a gain of about five yards on the play, it'll be second down and five for United Township as two offensive plays yield a good 20 yards for the Panthers. Split backfield, Shadowman, the wingman. Circioni pitches Lejeune on the option. Lejeune has got some running room to the outside. He will pick up a first down for United Township. Running the option to the far side of the field, which was the open side of the field. Lejeune sees a nice crease and cuts it up the middle with some good outside blocking provided on the play by Ben Sacco, number 40 for United Township. First and 10 for UT. The ball will be spotted at their own 44-yard line. They are trailing in this game. We're in the second quarter there. Oswego has scored 21 quick points to United Township zero. We have nine minutes and 30 seconds to play until halftime. Smolinski, the lone running back, he'll get the ball on the trap play up the middle, which yields nothing as big number 66 for Oswego is there to make the stop. That's Phil White coming from his nose guard position. Sniffs out the trap play pretty easy. As United Township now faced with a second down and long, Aaron Schofield checks into the ball game with D'Amico Villaggio. We'll see if Paul Circioni will put this one in the air for a first down as Lejeune splits to the near side of the field, which is the wide side of the field. Schofield goes to the other end and 
Back is Circioni, takes a look and then starts scrambling and he is broken free across the 30 yard line to the 20 where Bobby Miller will bring him down, drag him out of bounds. Good decision on the play by Paul Circioni, United Township quarterback. He looked the way that uh, Brian Lejeune was split out to the near side of the field, Lejeune was covered and without hesitation, Circioni tucked it up and went upfield, straight up the middle of the field for a nice UT Panther gain. It'll be first and 10 for United Township. The ball will be spotted at the Oswego 20 yard line. By far the deepest penetration United Township has had in this ball game. Gain of 35 on that play. Ben Sacco, the lone running back in the backfield. He'll get the ball and he will be dropped dead in his tracks right at the 20 yard line. Actually, that was Scott Durbin, the ball carrier, number 41. Durbin picks up a gain of nothing on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for UT. What a night for football, though. You wouldn't expect it to be the last Friday in October. Usually when the playoffs roll around, it's uh, chilly, wind blowing, overcast, but today, perfect day for football. Tight formation for United Township. Two wingbacks as it's a bootleg by Circioni. The ball is up in the end zone for Lejeune, who dives but can't come up with the football as Circioni is down on the field and he looks to be in some pain. It looks to possibly be his right leg but may have gotten rolled over after he threw the football and he looks to be down. And keep in mind, he, well, he didn't miss the uh, first couple of weeks of the uh, season. Yep. Yep. 7.47 left to go here in the... Uh, First half and uh, Oswego leading United Township 21 nothing. Good point, Mike. He did miss the first, I think, three ball games of the season, and I believe the backup quarterback is uh, Colin Goebel. And uh, Colin stepped up and did a pretty good job, led United Township to a, a two and one record. They lost to a state qualifier, state playoff qualifier, Peoria Notre Dame, which has one of the better defenses in the state. But uh, this looks to be kind of a serious injury for Circioni. He's got his helmet off. He is uh, lying uh, with his back down to the, the turf here. It's the Soul Bowl. As it uh, looks like the managers are calling for a couple of football players to come on. And we see Colin Gable is uh, down near on the near sideline, uh, huddled around some of his offensive uh, players. But uh, let's see, uh, as Mike Tracy now talks to Colin and basically giving him what he wants to do here. Well, remainder, remainder, remainder of this drive. Circioni can't quite put any uh, pressure on that right foot or knee of his. So uh, I'm not expecting to see him back anytime soon. He's, he's just barely walking with it, uh, touching it gingerly on the ground as, as he got carried off by a couple of United Township coaches. It'll be uh, third down and 10 for the Panthers. Ball spotted in the middle of the field at the uh, Oswego 21 yard line. Colin Goebel and a quarterback for the Panthers. He'll step back and try the pop pass to Miko Vallejo. He was wide open on the play, but uh, Vallejo just looked to be a little too slow for the football as uh, Goebel's pass was a perfect strike. Just a, a couple of feet out of the uh, outstretched hands of D'Amico Vallejo, and that'll bring up fourth down and 10 for the Panthers, and it looks like they're gonna go for it. Lejeune split to the near side of the field. Smolinski in the backfield with one of the Shadowmans as the ball will go up into the end zone. Lejeune tries to adjust to it, but he just can't quite come up with the football. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage as Goble puts up a nice looking football. Nice play call by the uh, Panthers, but the quarterback and receiver can't quite make connection and they squander the best chance that Oswego has given them. As they uh, went from their own 20 yard line to the uh, Oswego 20 yard line, and now Oswego has it first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. This is Oswego's uh, worst starting field position of the game so far. 7.38 left to go in the game along a Pete Ivanic on Mike Coquit. Oswego leading United Township 21 0. Receivers right and left, I formation. The quarterback, Esser, hands off to the second man through. That's Graziano. Graziano tries to go between the tackles, but Dustin Smolinski has other ideas and brings him down to the 21 yard line just to gain a one. Second and nine coming up. Mike, United Township has uh, switched to a six man defensive line. They're playing a six two, trying to combat uh, 
the, the heavy play that Oswego's offensive line produces. Second down and nine coming up for Oswego from their own 21-yard line. They split Cavender to the near side. Bobby Miller goes out to the far side, eye formation. The fullback is Ryan King. The tailback is Jake Graziano. We have a flag on the play. And uh, it looks like it's somewhere along the trenches that can be false start against Oswego. As United Township's trainers are still working on Paul Circioni, it looks to be uh, his knee or his foot as Mike Tracy now comes over to see his starting quarterback to see how he feels. <clears throat> and again, a five-yard penalty is uh, walked off against Oswego, so now they're back at their own 16-yard line facing third down and about 14 yards to go. They split Cavender the near side. Bobby Miller to the far side. I formation. Esser the quarterback. As UT shows blitz with Brian Seals uh, penetrating the line and a flag on the play. He may have it and may have violated the neutral zone while the snap was taking place. Or we may have false start. Let's see here what the referees say. Dead ball foul. Again, false start against Oswego. Back the Panthers up another five yards to the 11 yard line. So now, the Oswego Panthers have been penalized three times for 25 yards here tonight in the first half. And now they're faced with uh, third down and about 19 yards to go at their own 11-yard line. Now they split twin receivers far side with Miller. And in the slot is Cavender, split eye, uh, rather, split eye formation. And uh, there is a uh, handoff to Graziano between the tackles across the 15-yard line to the 16. Gain of five on that play, making the tackle for United Township Smolenski. So gain of five for Graziano. He has 13 carries, 83 yards here in the first half of play. Mm. 50 of those yards came on the very first drive of the game. Incredible Lockley's numbers. Running. Incredible numbers for Graziano. Six minutes to go, first half. United Township trailing 21 0. Twin receivers far side, I formation. And now the quarterback looks to throw. It is caught, no, in and out of the hands by Bobby Miller. He would have had it up for a uh, first down. Greg Esser went to throw it. Now the pass ball is incomplete, and Oswego has to punt, and uh, Bobby Miller will handle those duties. So Esser just one of three passing here tonight for 47 yards. However, that one completion was a huge one for a touchdown to Bobby Miller. Back deep for United Township. Uh, looks like we have Colin Goble and Josh Shadman. Bobby Miller into punt for Oswego. Low snap. He fields it. And nice high punt. Goble calls for a fair catch at the United Township 42-yard line. Wow, that kid's got a good leg. Yes, he does. And uh, that's what uh, Mike Tracy talked about, their special teams. But you look at the United Township, though, they do have some good field position to work with here. As UT will take over, five minutes and 33 seconds to play until halftime. They are trailing Oswego. 21 to nothing as Oswego put up a couple of quick touchdowns and uh, hasn't looked back since. Uh, United Township got to the uh, Oswego 20 yard line last possession, but they have better field possession this time around as Goble brings his troops up. First and 10 for UT as the uh, he'll keep it himself up the middle, faking the handoff to Smolinski. He'll dive across the 45 yard line. He'll pick up a nice gain on the first down, pick up three or four yards. It'll be second down and seven for United Township as we look on the bench and see Paul Cercioni has his shoulder pads off. I don't think we'll be seeing him back in the ball game tonight. He definitely hurt his right leg on a bootleg pass when he was uh, awkwardly tackled. As Brian Lejeune splits to the near side of the field, split backfield for the Panthers, two tight ends. Handoff will go on to the second back through. That's Dustin Smolinski. Smolinski gets tackled right at the line of scrimmage by a host of Oswego Panther defenders. Smolinski picks up a gain of about one or two yards on the play. It's going to be third down and long for United Township. And that's no way a senior wants to end their uh, high school football course the way uh, Paul Cercioni is doing right now. Third down and long for UT, desperately needing a first down 
Double wing formation. Smolinski, the fullback, is uh, it's a bootleg. Goble will keep it himself, cutting it up the middle, and will only get a gain of about two yards on the play. It'll be fourth down for United Township as Mike Tracy hesitating with his punt team for a second as we'll see what he's going to do and he's going to punt the football. It just took him a while to decide. 3.55 left to go in the first half. Durbin will punt us, Pete. Nobody to receive. Nope. Oswego's playing a punt safe, and that was almost blocked. A very poor punt from Sacco, but he gets a nice, uh, or, uh, Scott Durbin's punt was a very poor punt, but he got a nice five yard roll out of it as uh, Oswego will take over with their, uh, the ball in uh, pretty good field position once again, spotted at their own 31 yard line. Anytime Oswego has had to start inside their own territory, though, they fail to score. The times that they have scored, they've had great field position to work with. Again, they have a first and 10 at their own 31 yard line, along with Pete Ivanik on Mike Coquit. AM 1230, WLR bringing you live coverage of the first round of the Class 5A IHSA State Playoffs. Receiver split to the far side, I formation, and the quarterback Esser hands off second man through Graziano between the tackles across the 35-yard line, very close to the 39, <laughs> and he picks up eight yards on that play, second and two coming up. Don't forget, Mike, where we'll be tomorrow afternoon. That's right, we pack up the microphones and head over to Rotting Field in Moline to bring you the first round of the Class 6A playoffs as the Saints of St. Charles invade Browning Field to take on the 7-2 Moline Maroons. So second and two coming up now for the Oswego Panthers at their own 39-yard line. Split back offense, and there's a handoff, this time to Ryan King as he tries to go off left tackle, gonna find the yardage hard to come by, and he's gonna get uh, maybe a yard to the 40-yard line. But uh, Graziano having himself a fine game. Ryan King's had a touchdown tonight already for the Oswego Panthers. He gained one on that play there. Just a very, very big, very, very athletic team. And uh, it's, it's, that combination can be lethal in high school football. If you've got some athletes and that are very big and can move quick, then you're going to win a lot of football games. So Third and one from the 40-yard line of Oswego. Split backs. Receiver split to the far side. There's a handoff to King between the tackles across the 45-50 into Panther territory. And he gets down inside the uh, 40 to about the 39-yard line and uh, picks up the Oswego Panthers a first down, a gain of 21 yards. Take that uh, 26 yards to the 34-yard line. Well, just when you think United Township uh, can make a couple of decent uh, defensive stands, they... Uh come out and give up a big play to Oswego and uh, they uh, certainly thrive on the big play. They've had a lot of them tonight. And now 205 left to go in the first half. First and 10 for Oswego at the Panther 34 yard line. And a pass down the far sideline intended for Bobby Miller. Falls, goes out of bounds, incomplete. Stops the clock, a minute 57 left to go in the first half. United Township trailing the Oswego Panthers 21-0. The winner of this game moves on next week to take on either McHenry, who is unbeaten, or Champagne Centennial. And if United Township would happen to come back and win this game, they would go on the road regardless. So now, second down and 10 for Oswego at United Township's 34-yard line. Twin receivers near side, one to the far side. And now, their quarterback, Esser, looks to throw. It is caught by Miller. And it's caught at the 21-yard line and making a tackle to make sure he goes no further is Justin Shadman, but Oswego picks up a first down. Hmm. Good looking play by Oswego and uh, Miller almost broke the tackle once again and if he would have, he would have been uh, headed for the end zone. So uh, United Township right here needs to make a big, big, big defensive stand here at the end of the second quarter. And now from the 21-yard line of United Township, first and 10, handoff, second man through Graziano between the tackles as he gets side the 15 to the 14-yard line, making the tackle on the play for the United Township Panthers was uh, Adam Flores, and now it's going to set up second down and about, uh, I'd say, four yards to go from the 15-yard line. 
Mm. It's, the play of the offensive line from Oswego is uh, tremendous. There's some small colleges out there that uh, don't have offensive line these big. Twin receivers split to the far side, one to the far, uh, near side, one to the far side. There's a pass to Bobby Miller caught. He's going to go into the end zone and, and uh, score touchdown as he breaks a few tackles after he makes the catch to score the touchdown. And with 57.3 seconds left to go in the uh, first half, Oswego goes up 27-0 on that 15-yard pass play. Yeah, uh, slant pattern to the middle, basic football. Uh, Miller catches it, fakes one way, goes the other, spins himself around, and uh, uh, Justin Shadman just can't uh, can't do anything about it. As uh, Miller will stay on to try a, an extra point, and Esser to hold it for him. And there's the placement of it. There's the kick, and it is up, and it is good. And again, with 57.3 seconds left to go here in the first half, it's Oswego 28 and United Township nothing as Oswego scores on a six play, 69 yard drive and took about uh, two and a half minutes off the clock. Wow. And they score, they waste little time in scoring. Yeah, so far this has probably been the best offense that I've seen uh, this season. Uh, Mike, these guys uh, do a great job of running the football, but they also do a great job of passing mm -hmm. the football. And uh, when you can do both great, uh, I really, uh, who's beating these guys and I, I, how have these guys lost? They lost to a 2-17. and 17. Fenton High School out of Bensonville beat them. Uh, I tell you what, uh, McHenry is the number one seed in Class 5A. They, if they win tomorrow night over Champaign Centennial, they will play the winner of this game. And if they face Oswego, we may have an upset on our hands next mm -hmm. week in the second round. As this Oswego like team this. is uh, fired up, and uh, they brought a, a good crowd here to East Moline, as we can see from the far sideline. And now we have uh, Miller to kick it off. And he'll kick it deep, and this thing is... Uh, and came about, uh, came, it dropped about 10 yards, uh, I'm sorry, about five yards deep into the end zone. Uh, and that took about two seconds to get there, too. What a, just what a great leg by uh, Miller. Certainly the best kicker we've seen all season. If you've seen, if you saw J.J. Tubbs, what he did last year, kicking the ball into the end zone, uh, making sure that is that Rock Island's opponents had to start from their own 20-yard line, this is what uh, Bobby Miller's doing here tonight. As United Township will take over first and ten with under a minute to play until halftime, they're down 28 to nothing. As the second back through gets the football, and that is that is Justin Shadman, and he is met at the line of scrimmage for a minimal gain. Looks like he picked up oh two yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight. As the clock is running, 40 seconds to play until halftime. Not much to say about this ball game so far. Oswego's 28 points certainly have not come on fluke plays. No, no. Um, the the uh, yardage is going to show it uh, when we look at it at halftime. United Township uh, comes to the line of scrimmage. Wingman in motion. Lathville Joan, he'll get the ball on the second back through the belly series. He finds a hole. He's still on his feet across the 35 to the 40-yard line. Nice play by United Township. Getting a first down is Mike Tracy signals for a timeout. And the Panthers will stop the clock with 15.4 seconds to play nice. until halftime. Nice 17-yard gain there by Lejeune. And uh, gives United Township their fifth first down. And we talked about Oswego's offense and uh, their offensive line been the key to this game here tonight. And we mentioned it during the uh, pregame show. They have uh, two tackles that are uh, 165, 275. And the other is 6'3", 275. And overall, their offensive line average is about 240 pounds. And uh, that's something you don't see in the uh, Western Big Six area. Maybe the Moline's Plowboys about a year, a year or two ago were similar to that, but uh, nothing well, like this. I, you know, and, and Rock Island has some uh, people that not quite that big, but they have some big people. I played on some teams for Mike Tracy at Alleman. We had some extremely big kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played a couple of teams in the state playoffs. Uh, namely Belleville Alta from the title game in 90, and they had some incredibly yeah. big kids. Uh, size, strength, speed, it all it all uh, goes together, and uh, and this is what Oswego has. Yeah. They've, been, they've been nice to watch. 
Three receivers split to the near side of the field. That's the wide side of the field. Smolenski, the lone running back. Colin Goble drops back oh. pass. He is tripped up at the 30-yard line. Big number 71 in to make the play for Oswego. Tim Staffeld making another big play for the Panthers, and that should be, and that'll do it for the first half. United Township in the biggest hole it's been all season long. They were, I know they were trailing at halftime to Peoria and Notre Dame. I'm not quite sure remember what the score was. I think it was seven to, well, maybe it was seven to seven at halftime. Uh, they were trailing to Moline in the game of Browning Field, 10 to nothing at halftime. Yeah. But uh, 28 to nothing, Oswego uh, having no problem whatsoever. And we'll go ahead and uh, dissect this first half when we come back with our halftime show. Take In Moline. In one way or another in the future. Bobby Miller approaches the tee and kicks it off. And uh, to receive this uh, ball is uh, one of the Shadowmans. That would be Josh as he gets across the 25 to the 28 yard line. And there, Pete Ivanic, uh, United Township uh, sets up shop. And uh, it's uh, going to be very important to see how they come out here in the uh, early second half. Sure, it's good that they have the football. And uh, Oswego doesn't because if they go up 35 to nothing, then the game gets a little ugly. But United Township does have the ball in good field position. First and 10 from their own 29-yard line. LeJone splits to the near side of the field. Pro set in the backfield. Looks like Splomlinski and Shatterman. Shatterman gets the ball up the middle. He is met at the line of scrimmage. Lunges forward for a gain of about a yard on the play. As United Township now facing the second down. Oh, they're going to give him a favorable spot on the play. Looks like he had a gain of about three yards. It'll be second down and seven for United Township as Spolinski hasn't much been a factor in this football game from the drops off the field as Colin Goble, United Township quarterback, taking over for Paul Circioni. We don't even see on the sideline right now. Goble back to pass and he looks at it looks oh. like uh, Justin Shadaman running the curl pattern across the 40-yard line. The ball comes up short. It'll be third down and long for the Panthers, as we'll probably see some more passing from United Township in the second, here in the second half. Hey, you're right. I don't see any sign of uh, Paul Cercioni along the uh, United Township uh, sidelines here to the near side. Three back split to the near side of the field as Goble will roll up to the near side of the field. He's got a little bit of running room. He'll take it up field. Looks like he has enough. Oh, he's going to be close to a first down. Uh, I think he might be a little bit short. I'd say about a yard and a half maybe. Uh, depends where they spot it. But I think he is a little bit shy of the first down. And, and they're, they're going to measure it. Yeah, Looks like are. Mike Tracy was uh, right next to those officials. and. He definitely asked for a measurement uh, with 10.54 to play in the ball game. United Township trails Oswego 28 to nothing. Third quarter. What did I say? Ball game. Ball game? <laughs> Still got a whole half to play. <laughs> That's right. Uh, as they uh, bring the chains out, uh, 10.54 as you talked about, Pete. And uh, let's see here. Well, he might have it. They haven't stretched him yet. Well, oh. he's going to be about a half yard shy. And Mike Tracy is going to... It's fourth down. I think he's going to go for it here. Why not? Uh, you're down 28 points. It's in the second half. Still got a whole half of football to play, but this uh, could be uh, an important uh, statement for his football team to to get things going and uh, try and put some points on the board, maybe climb back in the ball game. Also, it's good uh, for the junior class that's uh, gonna be seniors next year to, to not go out on such a bad note after having such a, a good season. Uh, Western Big Six tri-champions along with Moline and Rock Island. Uh, Mike Tracy sent Brian Seals in with the play. Let's see what they go with here on uh, fourth and about a half yard. Justin Shadman split to the far side of the field. Looks like we got Brian Lejeune, one halfback, the fullback, Scott Durbin, as Colin Goble climbs under center. Fourth and inches for United Township. He'll hand the ball off to Durbin, and Durbin is met at the line of scrimmage. 
It's going to depend on where the referees spot the football. Yeah. Uh, if the, this near side uh, side judge looks like gave him a pretty favorable yep. spot, and that's a first down for United Township. Big play for the Panthers. I think the second surge there by uh, Scott Durbin was uh, what uh, gave him the first down. He was hit, then he spun around and uh, lunged forward a little bit, and uh, that was the key to getting that first down there. First and ten for the Panthers. Ball spotted at the near hash mark of their own 40-yard line. Durbin and Lejeune in the backfield. Shatterman's play out to the far side of the field. The option play will go to Lejeune as Lejeune tries to elude tacklers but is brought down near the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Oswego's defense in uh, getting away from United Township blockers. As Lejeune picks up a gain of about two yards on the play. Brian Lejeune, a nice looking ball player. 5'10", 165. Mike Tracy is going to get him back for another season, as well as uh, the Shadowmans will be back and uh, Colin Goble. So he's got his four people in the backfield are out right now, as it looks like Colin Goble uh, is tying his shoe. Referees time out. 9:53 left to go in the third quarter. Oswego leading 28 nothing, and also uh, United Township had a fine sophomore uh, program this year as well. Split backfield. Receiver split to the near side of the field, and they will oh, try and pass the ball, but Goble is hit in the backfield immediately, trying uh, sacking Goble's number 58, Jeff Homerding, and Homerding lies a pretty good shot on uh, Goble. He was looking uh, at the stop pattern down here at the split end, and he just didn't have time to release the football as Homerding applies a nice-looking hit. And... Uh, Goble will lose a few yards on the play. It'll be third down and long for the Panthers. Second time Goble's been sacked here tonight. Split backfield. The handoff on the play will go to number 27 of United Township. That's Terry Westbrooks. As Westbrooks picks up a gain of about four yards on the play, it'll be fourth down and ten. In comes the punting unit after going for it on fourth and inches and making it. Oswego's defense stands strong for three plays. As Scott Durbin is in to punt the ball for the Panthers. He is standing at his own 28-yard line. The ball is spotted at the 40. There is the snap. The punt's a short wobbler, and it bounces at the 36-yard line, takes a roll, crosses the 30-yard line, and will be down at the 29-yard line of Oswego, where it'll be first and 10 for the Panthers there. Oswego leading 28 to nothing with 8.32 to play in the ball game. So now it's uh, first and 10 for Oswego at their own 29-yard line to uh, start out their uh, first possession here of the uh, second half of play, leading 28 zip as they split Cavender to the near side. Split to the far side is Bobby Miller, high formation. King the fullback, Graciano the uh, tailback, and there's a handoff to the uh, fullback King as he goes off right guard and fights for a couple of yards to the 32-yard line, second down and eight coming up. The MVPs so far for this game have been the Oswego offensive line getting the job done. Uh, these are some big, big, big boys. Like we said earlier, a lot of Division Three, a lot of Division Two schools don't have offensive lines this size. Twin receivers, far side, Miller and Cavender. Offset eye formation. The quarterback is uh, Esser. Hands off second man through Graziano across the 35-yard line and uh, fights for a few more yards to the 38. He's going to be about uh, a yard and a half shy of a uh, Oswego Panther first down. Clock is running, 7.40 left to go, third quarter. They spot the football down at the 38, so a pickup of six on that play for Graziano, and that will take uh, Jake Graziano over the century mark tonight. 16 carries, hmm. 103 yards. Excellent. Third down and about uh, two yards to go from the 38-yard line. Twin receivers, far side. Offset eye formation. Hand off again to Graziano between the tackles across the 40. Has the Panthers a first down to the 44-yard line, making the tackle on the play for United Township was John Johnson. Dustin Smolenski was blitzing on the play, unfortunately for United Township. The Oswego running play was going uh, 
to the other direction and uh, they created a, a big gap and that's why we uh, saw Zuigo gain yet another first down here in the third quarter. From the 44 yard line, gain of six on that play. First and 10 coming up. There's a handoff to Graziano across the uh -oh. field marker, 45, 40, 35, 30, cuts near side, down across the 20, inside the 20, inside the 15, down to about the 10 yard line, inside the 10, and finally knocked down. Wow. That's all you can say to that play. No, nope, UT has not done a good job all night long with fundamental things, uh, the fundamental things of football, tackling, blocking, uh, reading assignments, doing the right things. As uh, we see, I see Paul Circioni on the sideline. He's got a big, uh, his right knee is all taped up. Looks like he's got some ice mm -hmm. applied to it. Uh, he definitely won't be returning to tonight's ball game. First and uh, 10 from the 10 yard line. Split backs, receivers split right and left. As there's a handoff to King. King goes off right, tack the guard rather, and uh, fights for the five yard line. And uh, that previous play for Jake Graziano picked up 46 yards. And now for Oswego, they are facing second and goal from the seven. From the seven yard line on second and goal. Split backs, receiver split right and left. And there's a handoff to King as he comes near side, tumbles in toward the end zone, touchdown. And Oswego goes up 34 to nothing with 534 left to go here in the third quarter of play. And again, Oswego wastes very little time in scoring. And now, Miller will attempt the extra point. And out of the hold of Esser. And there's the placement, the kick is up, and it is between the uprights, and it is good. And with 5.34 left to go here in the third quarter of play, it is Oswego 35 and United Township nothing. Mm. From the Soul Bowl in East Moline, this Marcy is Ross. Panther football. Please report to the press box. Marcy Ross. Play 71-yard drive that took up 2 minutes and 58 seconds. And uh, Ryan King scores from 7 yards out. And uh, Oswego is rolling 35 to nothing as uh, Pete Ivanic. We have uh, Bobby Miller ready to kick this off now to the Shadamans. Miller's kick is a low liner and looks like Justin Shadowman will take it. He's going to bring it to the near side of the field where he's got some running room and he needs a block and he is across the 40 to the 50 and he's cuts back into the middle of the field where he is taken out at the 42 yard line. Good looking return. Good looking return by Justin Shadowman. And next year, wow, United Township is just going to have a, a wealth of speed. Not only Goble, the Shadamans, uh, Brian Lejeune, uh, they are uh, going to have some experienced backs. Yes, they are. They that are. will return for the uh, year 2000 <laughs> Panthers. United Township will take over in, the, in Oswego territory at their own 43-yard line as Goble drops back and his slant passes incomplete on the play to Aaron Schofield as Schofield must have been bobbling it on the way down. Looked good from up here. But uh, Schofield's back was turned to us as it'll be second down and 10 for the Panthers, trailing 35 to nothing with 5.19 to play in the third quarter. All as we go tonight. Pro formation for United Township as Goble drops back to pass. It's a bench and go. And the pass is thrown out of bounds, out of the reach of number 83, Ryan Rangel. As desperation time has come for United Township, trying to get something on the board. This has been their best uh, field position all night long to start a possession as they have the ball resting at Oswego's 42-yard line. 
Pro formation once again, two wide receivers, and Lejeune goes in motion to the wide side of the field. On the counter play, the guy, handoff goes to Josh Shadaman. Shadaman makes his way up to the 35 yard line. It'll be where it'll be fourth down and four for the Panthers as the Panthers, of course, will go for it on fourth down, no question, as the play is brought in quickly as Colin Goebel breaks him out of the huddle. Pro formation once again for United Township. As Goebel is under center, and this time the handoff goes to Scott Durbin, and Durbin is going to be held shy of the first down. Looks like he might have had it if he could have gotten away from the first tackler at the line of scrimmage, but that defensive lineman hung on and brought Durbin down rather nicely. He held him uh, to about a two-yard game, leaving him two yards shy of the first down marker. United Township once again will turn the ball over on downs. And keep in mind now, if uh, Oswego would happen to score here and go up by more than 40 points and we're in the second half of play, Ooh. we'd have a continuous clock. Yeah. yeah. And I think United mm. Township would like to prevent that. From the 33-yard line, Oswego has it in their own territory. I formation, twin receivers, far side. Essel hands off. And that is uh, to the second man through. That would be Steve Donlinger. Donlinger down this far sideline across midfield into United Township territory to the 46-yard uh, line and a Panther first down. You know, I've, I've given a lot of credit to Oswego's offensive line, but uh, let's face it, they're, they're, they're running backs and their receivers are all doing an excellent job of downfield blocking. They're tying up uh, United Township's linebackers and defensive backs, and uh, those linebackers and D-backs can't get away to make the play, and that's why Graziano is getting so many yards tonight. Donlinger's first carry good for 21 yards and a first down. Again to Donlinger. Donlinger between the tackles, across the 45-yard line to about the 43, picks up three, second and seven coming up. Donlinger, stopped by Smolenski as United Township was going to take a timeout here on second down as Mike Tracy waves for his kids to come over to the sideline so they can chat at the sideline. So timeout has been called, 4-16, left to go in the third quarter. As we go up 35 to nothing over United Township. And again, uh, I think, as we talked about, Pete, Two things. Going in the playoffs, and it wouldn't certainly be playing as we go tonight. From the 43-yard line of, Mo of uh, United Township on second down and seven, receivers right and left, Essel looks to throw. It is oh, complete beautiful. to Donlinger, down the far sideline, across the 30, 25, very close to the 20-yard line, knocked out of bounds by Goebel, but not until he uh, picks up the Panthers, a first down again. Beautiful play by Oswego, faking the slant pattern uh, to, the wide, to the near side of the field. Uh, the running back uh, filled in and, and did a nice little wheel pattern down the sideline and was just wide open. They mark the football down at the 24-yard line. Pickup of 19 on the pass play from uh, Esser to uh, Donlinger. And now there's a handoff this time is to the second man through. And uh, we'll have to see who that is on that carry. Might have fumbled at the end of the play. Because that is not Graziano. That's, uh, oh, but he recovered it. We'll let him unstack the pile, and uh, the, the man on the carry for Oswego is Will Luke, 5'10", 190, and uh, he uh, lost a yard back to, well, they're going to mark it back down to the 23, so second and 10 coming up. Second down and 10 for the uh, Oswego Panthers from the 23 yard line of United Township. There's a handoff to Donlinger. He goes off left tackle and uh, fights for some yardage, fights to the 20 yard line, picks up about three yards and uh, Donlinger is a senior, six foot 190. And now it brings up third down and about, uh, we we'll call it about eight yards to go. Well, seven from the 21 yard line. So the Oswego Panthers have their <coughs> backup backfield in and still getting some yardage. Now third down. 
Esser looks to throw near side, and his pass was deflected at the line, and it's incomplete. It is oh. caught, rather, and making the catch is oh, Matthew boy. Prinzing, 5'9", well, 165, and a junior. The receiver pretty much made the call on that one. He came up and held the ball up and told the referee, hey, I, got, I caught yep. the football, and the referee didn't know, and he uh, kind of went along with the kid. Uh, so a uh, nice job of selling himself uh, to the referee by the running back or the uh, wide receiver for Oswego. Matthew Prinzing on the uh, reception and a first down of all things to the 12-yard uh, line. So first and 10 for Oswego at the Panther 12-yard line. Hessel hands off this time to Donlinger near side across the 10, 5-yard line inside the 5 down to the, about the 3. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is the backups for Oswego, and there's nothing United Township can do right now, to be honest with you, to stop Oswego's offense. Well, these are the backup running backs. I think the offensive line pretty much is still uh, still intact, and uh, Miller's still out there at receiver. Uh, so. Second down and about three. Yeah, getting kind of ugly here. From the five-yard line. This game could be quickly under wraps here in a few minutes if uh, Oswego scores here. What I mean by is uh, the clock would continue to run. And there's a handoff again to Donlinger. Donlinger goes off right guard, and he's fighting for the end zone. Going to be about two yards shy still as they, well, he may have actually lost a yard. They're going to spot it back down at the uh, four. So uh, a gain of a yard on that play for Don. They can still get a first down with putting the ball without putting the ball in the end zone. But uh, Jay Graziano, 18 carries, 155 yards for Oswego tonight. Now on third and about two from the four yard line. Esser hands off this time. It's to Donlinger. Donlinger goes off right guard and very close to the goal line. Maybe about a yard shy, but he does pick up the Panthers of Oswego a first down. So first and goal from the two coming up. First and goal now from the two. And, and that'll do it. That'll do it for the third quarter. Okay, the third quarter has come to a close. And it's Oswego, 35, United Township, nothing. Back with the fourth quarter from the Sobel and East Moline. This is Panther football. Goal from about the yard and a half yard line. If that made any sense? Mm, no, no yard it didn't. A, from the, uh, we'll call it the, <laughs> from the 54 inch yard line, or 54 inch line, there we go. First and goal, and there's a handoff. The Nets to the second man through, fighting for the end zone. Touchdown for United uh, for Oswego, and that is Dee Donlinger. Power, and now it's power, foot, power football from Oswego. Uh, as this game uh, has been out of reach pretty much since uh, the end of the first quarter. And now Miller is in to attempt the extra point. And again, once they kick it off to United Township here to resume play, we'll have a nonstop clock. So now, Greg Esser to hold it, the extra point attempt for Miller, which is up and good. And with 11.54 left to go here in the football game, it's Oswego 42, United Township nothing. From the Sobel and East Moline, this is Panther football. Pete Ivanic. That's right, Mike. As United Township uh, just hasn't gotten things done tonight the way that they had hoped, and they've been out of this ball game since the, since that kickoff, really. Uh, that short uh, kickoff to start the game as Miller puts his toe into the football. It's a low liner. It drops dead about the 20-yard line. And right up the middle of the field, that's number 23 for United Township. Oh, uh, nice run back across the 40-yard line of Oswego before Miller brings him down. Mike Naraki. Mike Naraki. Uh, it was a kind of a bad kick by Oswego. Naraki took the ball and was not touched. 
Uh, went right up the middle of the field, and uh, wow, United Township, United Township has uh, almost returned two or three uh, punts and kickoffs tonight for touchdowns. Uh, you, we you could have our, ourselves yeah. a whale of a football game just, if all those were scored. You just imagine what if, as it's a spread backfield for United Township, Shatterman in motion, he'll receive the pitch from Goebel, cuts it outside, he goes across the 30-yard line, makes it about to the 25-yard line, where he picks up enough for a Panther first down. As the clock will continue to run, United Township trailing 42 to nothing. And of what the Shadowmans have meant to the uh, UT offense tonight between the uh, two, Justin and Josh, five carries, 49 yards, about a 10 yard average. Hmm. First and 10 for United Township, ball spotted at the Oswego 24 yard line to the far side of the field. Double wing formation for UT, as this time the pitch will go to number 27 of the Panthers. That is Terry Westbrooks. Westbrooks gets a nice gain of about five yards on the play. It'll be second down and five for UT. Reminder tomorrow, Moline takes on St. Charles at Browning Field. They go on the air at two o'clock. Kickoff 2.30 here on AGM 12.30 WLR. Same formation, double wing set, lone fullback for UT as the handoff goes to the fullback, and that's Mike Naraki. And Naraki is stood up at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and five for the Panthers, and we'll see what Mike Tracy decides to do as he gives the play to D'Amico Vallejo. As he'll give it to Colin Goble, stepping in for the injured Paul Circioni, who went down in the second quarter with some sort of injury to his right knee. Goble under center, double wing set for the Panthers. The pitch will go to Shadaman on the on the toss sweep, and Shadaman picks up a nice gain. He's probably close to the first down marker, and it is a Panther first down, as that'll keep UT's drive going. With 9.20 to play in the ball game, United Township trailing 42 to nothing. First round of the class 5A playoffs. <laughs> That last report from Rocky Stadium. At halftime, the Rock Island Rocks were trailing Ottawa seven to six. Spread our uh, double wing formation once again for the Panthers. And quick pitch once again goes to Westbrook. Westbrook has some running room and he crosses into the five yard line. Nice looking play by UT. Terry Westbrook takes the quick pitch, has plenty of running room and is near the goal line for the first time tonight for the Panthers. Unfortunately for United Township, just might be too late in the ball yeah, game. Yeah, and United Township has nine first downs. About 75% of those have been from the Shadamans. Justin Shadaman, the wingman, pro formation, the backfield for United Township. Penalty flags on the play. Westbrooks left early from his position as uh, the ball carrier for UT, Mike Naraki plunges into the end zone, but that touchdown will be negated. When it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. And it's uh, not raining yet, but. <laughs> it was a motion call against the Panthers. So that offsides, backs up. offsides against United Township, that'll move the ball back five yards. The ironic thing about it, UT finally gets in the end zone and their first penalty of the night. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> things just haven't gone the way of the Panthers. They are a, a much better football team than this, though. Double wing set formation. The pitch once again goes to Westbrook, and he is going to be met at about the five yard line by the safeties of Oswego. It'll be first down and it'll be second down and goal from about the six yard line, five yard line for United Township. Desperately trying to get something on the board. Clock is running nonstop. Unless uh, UT puts the football into the end zone here. Double wing set for the Panthers. As Shatterman will get the pitch and he will go into the end zone for the Panthers. Touchdown United Township. As the crowd that remains here at the Soul Bowl shows their support for United Township. 
It's been a lopsided game tonight. All Oswego up till that point as Aaron Schofield is on to try the extra point for United Township. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is up and it is good. So it's six minutes, 53 seconds to play in the ball game. United Township finally gets on the scoreboard. Oswego 42, United Township seven. And we'll keep it right here. United Township scores on an eight play, 38 yard drive that uh, took off uh, about five minutes from the clock and a five yard touchdown run by uh, Justin Shadaman here tonight. And uh, again, Justin Shadaman's had himself a pretty good football game. Both Shadamans have between special teams and their offensive outburst. Uh, out, outburst. Uh, Justin Shadaman, six carries, 54 yards. Josh has one carry, seven yards. Also, Josh has had some pretty good uh, kickoff returns here tonight. And again, the clock is now stopped, 6.53 left to go here in the football game. And uh, Oswego leading United Township, 42 to seven. Uh, again, tomorrow, Two o'clock, we go on the air from Browning Field as Moline at seven and two takes on the St. Charles Fighting Saints, who are also seven and two and have a roster of about 77 players. Yeah, and they <laughs> uh, have an excellent athletic program. Their uh, school won six, six state titles last year in team sports. That ties an ISHA record. And they've already won one this and year. And girls golf team won a state title a couple of weeks ago. So they're. Uh, Rare, they're going to be raring to go. There's no doubt about it as UT lines up for the onside kick, the most exciting play in football, and that'll be easily taken by Oswego's number 35 on the play. His name is Jody Sharp. Sharp makes a nice play on the onside kick, and Oswego will get the ball in great field position. We'd like to mention our sponsors once again while we have some time. Red Wing Shoes, go in and see Gary at uh, the Red Wing Shoe Store on 23rd Avenue. They've got a great selection of uh, boots and shoes for uh, all types of uh, people. So go ahead, go down to Red Wing Shoes. Also DJ's Cafe, 53rd Street and John Deere Expressway in Moline. Great ribs, great pizza. In the morning they have gourmet coffee and bagels. Go to DJ's Cafe. Fumble on the play on first and 10 from midfield and UT may have recovered this football, but no. no. They're going to put it back to Oswego, but they're going to lose five yards and making the recovery on the play for Oswego is Bill Gutierrez. UT fans after the game visit the Poppers Den over in Silvis for some great, uh, great atmosphere. Uh, great place to go. They got a lot of uh, sandwich specials for lunch during the week. Uh, looks like a, a really nice place in Silvis. That's the Poppers Den. Also Sweet Nothings uh, in Ridgewood Mall. Uh, Sweet Nothings does a lot of bakery and caters a lot of events. Uh, Sweet Nothings, Ridgewood Mall. Second and 14 from the 46-yard line, handoff to Bill Gutierrez as he goes off right tackle. And he's dropped for a loss back to the 44-yard line. Going to bring up now third down and long. Leisure time billiards and total fitness. They're right next to each other, uh, right by the fire station. That's right down the street from uh, UT High School. Uh, billiard, uh, um, leisure time, 42nd Avenue. There you go. Leisure time billiards. Uh, got a lot of pool tables. Got a lot of dart boards. They have food. They have a bar area. Very nice place to go. Go visit Dwayne at Leisure Time Billiards. Hand off to Bill Gutierrez on third and 16 from the 44 yard line. Gutierrez gets back to the 50 and making the tackle on the play for the United Township Panthers defense was Ben Sacco. Also go visit, uh, like we said, Total Fitness. Bob Horner and his staff do a great job. Uh, with all your workout needs. They've got an excellent weight room, uh, I believe tanning beds and all sorts of things. Friendly atmosphere. Uh, they have the lowest rates per month in town of any other gym. You can uh, get a membership there at Total Fitness for under $30. That's a real steal. So uh, go to Total Fitness. As Bobby Miller punts this off, wow. a nice high punt. Beautiful. Against the wind and the punt uh, comes, the ball comes down at the 18 yard line. And UT will take over on downs as the ball rolls to the 16. 4 11 left to go. Clock is uh, stopped. Uh, actually, the clock is going to continue to run as uh, UT uh, trails 42 to 7. A couple more sponsors uh, Metro Bank. They have 10 different locations here in the Quad Cities. Eight in Illinois, two in Iowa. They've got 37 ATMs out there. They can deal with all your banking needs, uh, uh, loans, anything like that. Metro Bank here in the Quad Cities. 
Uh, they're open seven days a week at the Walmart location in Moline as UT's offense is on the field, full back up the middle, gains oh, two or three yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven for the Panthers. Also go visit Slugger's Pizza after tonight's game. Get a large pizza and you get a free order of Slugger's bread. So uh, go visit Slugger's here in Silvis. Nice place. They also got great lunch menu throughout the week including a buffet. Second and eight now from the 19. Second and eight for the Panthers. Split formation in the backfield. Goble hand pitches the ball to Shatterman. Shatterman's got a lot of running room. He gains a first down up across the 30-yard line for United Township. Under three minutes to play. UT on the short end of one. Oswego 42, UT 7. Also, don't forget to visit the Bent River Brewery in Moline. Uh, great beer. They have six beers on tap currently right now. You can also buy Bent River Brewing, uh, Bent River beer in a, a lot of dozens of locations here in the Quad Cities. As Goble hands the ball off to his first back through, that's number 23 for UT. That's Mike Naraki. Naraki is dragged down. A big loss on the play of about two yards. Actually, I think they were nice on that play. Yeah, I think uh, they were nice too. No gain at all. And once again, go visit Bent River in Moline. Uh, the Popper's Den has Bent River beer, so uh, if you want some Bent River, you can go to the Popper's Den. Of course, be over 21. Be over 21, please. Pro formation for the Panthers, second down and 11. The ball spotted at their own 30-yard line. Goble back to pass on the pop are on the dump pass to his tight end number 89. That's Todd McElerney. McElerney uh, has the ball slip right through his hands. It'll be third down and 11 for the Panthers. Clock still running with a minute 44 left to go here in the game. And uh, 42 to seven, Oswego is up on top. And again, uh, patronize these uh, sponsors of tonight's game because they're the ones that make it possible for us to bring you this game tonight here on AM 1230 WLLR. Spread formation for, I'm sorry, double wing set formation for United Township. As it looks like one of the teams, United Township has called timeout. I think they only have 10 guys out there on the field. Yes, please go uh, help out our sponsors. We uh, are usually carry Moline High School football on Friday nights, Mike, but because Moline is playing Tomorrow afternoon at home at Browning Field at 2.30. We have some open space, so we went out and uh, asked UT if it's okay if we could come over and do their game Friday night, and they said yes. So we'd like to thank Athletic Director, uh, Athletic Director Jim Unruh, who uh, gave us a list of some possible sponsors. Also Mike Tracy, who uh, gave us a few sponsors also, and uh, everything seemed to work out well. As uh, clock Stopped because of the timeout with a minute 21 third left to go. And, third down and long for the Panthers. Halfback option pass coming as it's uh, going to be picked off on the play. Looks like Westbrook's pass was picked off by number 23 on the play. Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson for as we go. They'll get the ball back in pretty good field position at the UT 38 yard line. So here we go with uh, well, what should be the last uh, drive of the last game. Last play of the game. The as, clock is still running. As we have a minute left to go in the game, and Oswego is up 42 to 7. A fast played football game here tonight, even without the clock uh, running nonstop. As we have a handoff to the first man through, and for the uh, Oswego Panthers, that is Will Luke. Look between the tackles to the 33-yard line, and he picks up five yards on the play. Second and five coming up. Five. And we'll see if Oswego, uh, I don't think they really have to run a play here, and they don't. That's, That's gonna, gonna be, be yeah, this is gonna be the football game tonight. So we have come to the conclusion of this uh, first round Class 5A playoff football game. And the United Township Panthers will end their season with a record of seven wins and three losses. 
as Oswego moves on to the second round uh, with a record of 8-2. and two. Oswego 42, United Township Panthers 7. Up next, we'll have our post-game show as we'll recap this game and to look at the stats for you. As we come to you from the Soul Bowl and East Bowl Lane, this is Panther Football.